Okay. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to this hearing of the New York City Council's Committee on General Welfare. Today, the committee will be voting on several bills related to hunger and equitable access to food in New York City. The proposed bills will make critical strides not only on hunger, but on the much needed, impro on much needed improvements to the city's practices on planning, distribution, and data collection related to food. These bills will see seek to facilitate greater integration of urban agriculture and food systems into the fight against hunger and inequity. Despite strides such as the rate of food insecurity in the city being on the decline, an estimated one million New Yorkers remain food insecure, and the persistence of the meal gap, which refers to the number of meals missed from insufficient resources, is staggering. Food waste and system inefficiencies underscore the need for creating a comprehensive and integrated plan with an average of 8.7 pounds of food wasted by New York City households every week. Addressing these individual, institutional, and agency-wide inadequacies will help to ensure that there is improved access, equity, and security in food for all New Yorkers. Among the bills we are voting on today, proposed intro 1650A by Councilmember Adams would require HRA to provide information about the Health Bucks program at farmers markets in New York City to all individuals who receive or apply for SNAP. The Health Bucks program was created in 2005 to provide New Yorkers with additional purchasing power to buy fresh locally grown produce. This bill would, in, would help ensure more SNAP recipients are taking advantage of the program. Proposed intro 1659A by Councilmember Margaret Chin would require DSS, in collaboration with the Department for the Aging, to develop a plan of, to identify and enroll seniors who are eligible for SNAP but aren't yet enrolled. While DIFTA and City Meals on Wheels do help screen elderly homebound New Yorkers for SNAP benefits, Many seniors aren't connected to the benefits and are unaware of the program. As we have heard in testimony from prior hearings, and as is well documented, hunger and food insecurity persists among college students. Many college and universities in the city have emergency food pantries. However, we know that the need is greater than what is being provided. Many SNAP recipients may not be able to prepare meals for themselves and may not have adequate facilities to do so, such as those residing in shelter. The utilization and effectiveness of SNAP could also be improved if recipients were able to use their benefits to purchase a hot or prepared meal. Resolution 1024 and, and Resolution 1025 by Councilmember Farrah Lewis calls on the state to expand eligibility for SNAP to college students and to opt into the restaurant meals program to allow the disabled, elderly, and homeless SNAP recipients to utilize their benefits for hot meals and prepare foods at participating stores, delis, and restaurants, respectively. Thank you very much to all the advocates today who are here today and who have testified in the past for joining us. And I look forward to hearing from you all on these critical issues. I'd like to quickly thank my staff, my chief of staff, Jonathan Boucher, Legislative Director Elizabeth Adams, and committee staff, Aminta Kilowan, Senior Counsel, Crystal Pond, Senior Policy Analyst, Natalie Omery, Policy Analyst, and Julia Harmus, Finance Analyst. Now, um, I would like to uh, read a brief statement by Council Member Adrian Adams, sponsor of Intro 1650. Uh, this is a statement from Council Member Adrian Adams on Introduction 1650. Good afternoon. I would like to start by thanking Chair Levin for his willingness to deliver these comments on Intro 1650 on my behalf. Unfortunately, our current food system is broken. Every day, people struggle to afford to feed, to afford food to feed themselves and their families. We need to increase access to healthy food for New Yorkers with easy and affordable ways for residents to eat their fruit and vegetable requirements. Previous efforts to increase food access have not created the comprehensive systemic change needed to dismantle the deepening racial and economic inequities experienced in many communities across New York City. Our food system continues to exacerbate existing gaps and alienates historically marginalized communities. New efforts to increase food equity are needed that cross multiple sectors as unhealthy food is a problem that falls disproportionately on poor and low income people. A healthy diet can be transformative and I encourage my colleagues to vote in favor of intro 1650 and the entire package. Sincerely, Councilmember Adrian Adams. 
And with that, I would like to turn it over to Council Member Lewis, the sponsor of resolutions 1024 and 1025. Thank you so much, Chair Levin. Good afternoon, everyone. And thank you, Chair, for the opportunity to speak about these vitally important resolutions. More than one million New Yorkers, New York residents are food insecure. These New Yorkers are forced to make critical choices between paying their rent, tuition, or utilities versus buying groceries to feed their families or themselves. This is definitely a crisis. My two resolutions, 1024 and 1025, call on the state to drastically expand access to the most basic human right, which is food. Resolution 1024 would call upon New York, the New York State Office of Temporary and Disability Assistance to expand SNAP, SNAP eligibility for public for public college students, allowing them to use their classroom hours to satisfy employment requirements. Resolution 1025 calls upon New York State legislator to pass and for the governor to sign legislation to opt into the already established SNAP restaurant meals program, which will allow disabled, elderly, and homeless SNAP recipients to use their benefits on hot meals and other prepared foods at participating grocery stores, delis, and restaurants. SNAP offers recipients so many benefits, but the reality is that there are several barriers that prevent millions of eligible recipients from using these benefits. It's up to us to keep these barriers low. The reality is that poverty and homelessness affect New Yorkers who are employed, underemployed, and unemployed. Allowing vulnerable populations to use their benefits towards hot and prepared meals allows them to focus on other pressing issues, attending school, finding employment, securing child childcare and looking after their own well-being. In our fight for equity, we must grant New Yorkers who rely on supportive programs and services full access. I urge my colleagues today to support these two resolutions that will help close the gap and end hunger for millions of New Yorkers. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Councilmember Lewis. Uh, do any other council members have any remarks? Okay. Seeing none, I will ask uh, William Martin to call the roll. William Martin, committee clerk, roll call vote committee on general welfare. All items are coupled. Chair Levin. Aye on all. Gibson. Chair, with your permission to briefly explain? Yes. Thank you so much. Um, good afternoon, Chair Levin and, and all of my colleagues. Um, I am proud to vote on all of the items on today's agenda and specifically want to recognize Councilmember Adrian Adams and Councilmember Margaret Chin. I am a big supporter of the Health Bucks program that's administered by DOHMH, and I am one of the council members that continues to provide local discretionary funding to supplement the work that's already being done in my local district through monthly nutrition classes, working with farmers markets, uh, working with City Harvest and all of the different mechanisms in our city that really provide a lot of access. For us in the Bronx, it's a challenge because we know many families are living literally in food deserts and access to healthier options should be a necessity um, and not a luxury. And the Health Bucks program has been providing great success, so I look forward to the bill's implementation and certainly focusing on seniors and their eligibility for uh, nutritional benefits and SNAP is always a great thing because many seniors do not apply and I want to recognize Councilmember Farrah Lewis for her leadership on today's resolutions and really making sure that we have partners in the state. Uh, OTADA, the state agency, has done a lot of work with us through the years and, and certainly making sure that students um, in our CUNY system as we have a new $1 million pilot that the city has embarked on with CUNY to focus on access to food pantries and additional food items. Uh, this is just one further step that allows college students access to healthier food. So with that, thank you colleagues on important legislation and I vote aye on today's agenda. Thank you. Lander. and gratitude for this very important package of bills. A vote aye on all. Reynoso. Uh, I vote aye on all. Traeger. Aye. Gordinchik. I want to add my voice to uh, those who have already spoken. Uh, I want to thank the chairman for his leadership on this food issue. I've been on this committee since I joined the council uh, a little over four years ago, and this has uh, been a passion of mine, as many of you know, and I... Um, continue to uh, advocate that no one should go hungry in our great city. We have the food, we have the logistics, 
It's just a matter of our will to uh, ensure that um, nobody um, goes hungry. So I think these pieces of legislation that we are going to pass right now uh, will help uh, to continue to build that um, strong foundation uh, for New Yorkers uh, so that nobody goes hungry. And with that, I vote aye on all. Holden. Aye on all. By a vote of seven in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and no abstentions, all items have been adopted by the committee. Uh, thank you very much, colleagues. Uh, we will keep the roll open for another moment uh, for some of our additional colleagues to come down. Thank you. Congratulations, Council Member.